Good morning and Boker Tov and Shavua Tov from the mountains, the beautiful mountains of Tzvat where we spend Shabbat. You know, when you go to a hotel in America and then you come to a hotel in Israel, you always notice the difference. And that is that every hotel room has a mezuzah on it. But this hotel in Tzvat it is even better. You know, sometimes rooms have names. Well, they also name the rooms. And it's the Kabbalistic Sefirot. Chachma, Bina, Da'at, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, kindness. Our room was Yesod, which is bonding and connection. And so there's a spiritual vibe in this city and throughout the land of Israel. This week's Torah portion has the story of two tribes, God and Ruvain, who approached Moses as the Jewish people are about to cross over into the land of Israel after 40 years of journeying towards the land of Israel. And these two tribes say to Moses, you know, we would rather take our portion in the Transjordan on the other side of the river and not cross over into the land of Israel and receive our inheritance in the land of Israel. And at first Moses gets very upset at them and says, are you going to repeat the mistake that the spies made of not wanting to go into the land of Israel? After 40 years of journeying towards the promised land, are you going to not want to settle in the land of Israel? And they say to Moses, we will fight to conquer the land, but then we will resettle on the Transjordan, on the east bank of the Jordan. And our rabbis look at the story and try to understand the motivation of these two tribes. Why would they not want to go into the land of Israel? And one beautiful interpretation is that they had wonderful, spiritual, lofty, idealistic motives. It wasn't that they were materialistic and wanted to be in a fertile ground for their flock, as they state. But their real motive was that they understood that throughout Jewish history there would be those who would be privileged to live in the Holy Land of Israel, but there would be Jews who would live all over the world in the diaspora. And therefore they wanted to create a human link, a connection between those living in Israel and those living in the Transjordan and beyond in the great wide diaspora. And therefore they were the first Jewish community outside of the land of Israel, forging this bond eternally between those living in Israel and those living outside of the land of Israel, so that we could be connected to the holiness and the spirituality of the land of Israel, no matter where we live, whether it's in Australia, New Zealand, California, Taiwan, anywhere around the world, Jews are all bound to the land of Israel. And this is obvious from the fact that we all face east. We pray towards Jerusalem. But it also, also our connection is daily. When we pray for the welfare of Jerusalem and the land of Israel, for its citizens and its soldiers, just like we do every single day, and especially on Shabbat, at our synagogue in Palm Beach. There's a story told about this couple in 2016 from California, Betsy and Simon. They went on a trip to Israel and they were visiting Herzliya and they went out to eat in a restaurant called, uh, the name of the restaurant was Meat and Wine Co. They got a seat downstairs when suddenly Betsy says to her husband, you know, maybe we should sit upstairs, there's a better view. So they asked the waiter if they could be seated upstairs. They said, sure, they sent them upstairs and now they had a new waiter. The waiter comes over, gives them the menus, tells them the specials of the day. And then at that point, the waiter takes back the menus after getting their orders and says, if there's anything you need, I'm your waiter tonight. My name is Barak, whatever I can do. He walks away and Betsy turns to Simon and says, Barak, I wonder what his la mother's name is. And so Simon calls the waiter back and says, Barak, by the way, what is your mother's name? And Barak says, my mother's name is Orna. And Betsy says, were you a soldier in the war in Gaza, Operation Protective Edge in 2014? And he says, yes, I was. He says, were you wounded in that operation? He says, yes, I was wounded severely. I was in the hospital for a while. And Betsy says, I pray for you each and every day. And Betsy went on to explain that during the war, there was an organization that was taking the names of all the wounded soldiers and calling people to ask if they would pray for a particular soldier. And the name that she was given was Barak ben Orna, Barak the son of Orna. And she wrote down the name and put it on her kitchen cabinet 
where her cups are, so that every day when she goes to take out her coffee cup, she would see his name and pray, say some psalms for his recovery. And Betsy says to Barak, you're not going to believe this, but just two weeks ago, I was in California in Beverly Hills. I was in my kitchen. I went to take out a cup and I saw your name and I said a prayer for you. And I said to myself, I wonder how he's doing. I wonder if he's alive. I wonder how he is. I wish I could meet him and see how he's doing. And here we come to Israel. We come to Herzliya. We come to a particular restaurant. We ask to be seated upstairs instead of downstairs. And from all the people, the six million people in Israel, you're our waiter. And God answers my prayers. And I get to see that you're healthy and you're doing well. And then all my prayers were answered. And here you are, the person I've been praying for for two years. And they were so happy to see each other. And both Betsy, Simon, and Barak were all shocked by the amazing divine providence that God brought them together. They forged this beautiful connection in this relationship. And three weeks later, Barak sent an email to Betsy and Simon and said, I want you to know I went home that night. I couldn't sleep. I was thinking, isn't this amazing that Jews in California were praying for me every day and that God brought us together so we could meet and now become lifelong friends. He said, I went the next morning and I took out my tefillin that I haven't worn since my bar mitzvah. And I prayed with my tefillin for the first time. And every day since I've been wearing my tefillin because I realized that God truly listens and hears our prayers. What B'nai God, the members of the tribe of God and Ruven taught us was that we may be dispersed all over the world, but we're always connected to the land of Israel. We have the privilege and the blessing of visiting Israel, being inspired by Israel and the holiness of Israel and the people of Israel and the selfless devotion and sacrifices that they make every day to protect and defend the Jewish people, not just in Israel, but all around the world. And through our prayers, we can be connected, just like God and Reuven were bound to their brothers and sisters in Israel. Jews around the world are all connected to each other and to the land of Israel and the people of Israel. Ki like one person with one big heart, just like the tribe of Bnei Gad and Bnei Reuven illustrated to us that we may be oceans apart, but our hearts and souls are forever one. Have a wonderful day.